Elon Musk just called Joe Biden a puppet. Mr. Reagan. Now, I have discussed Joe Biden's marionette-like tendencies in the past. We've all seen his press conferences where he's taking questions from a list provided to him by his handlers. We've all seen him talk about how if he takes any more questions, he's going to get in trouble. Who are you going to get in trouble with, Joe? Recently, I don't know if you guys saw this, Joe Biden was asked about the half a million dollars that the Justice Department was planning on giving to illegal immigrants who were separated from their families under Donald Trump. And Joe Biden said, that's not going to happen. That's fake news. And then the Justice Department came out or somebody in his administration came out and said, I'm not sure that Joe Biden is aware of what we're doing. <laughs> He's the president of the United States of America. Shouldn't he be directing you guys on what you are supposed to be doing? Like people in Joe Biden's administration should not be coming out publicly and saying that they haven't yet informed Joe Biden about what their plans are. That... <laughs> I mean, it's almost like the, the Biden administration is publicly admitting, no, Joe Biden is not in control. The, the buffoon puppet that we have up there on stage just just doesn't know what's going on. So don't listen to anything that he says. Now, I've speculated in the past and in, in, in previous videos that Joe Biden is not really in charge. Of course. I mean, we've all talked about that. I read a comment on Twitter, some Twitter or YouTube or something, in which somebody speculated that the Oval Office TV set that they've had constructed uh, for Joe Biden to do his basically everything, every press conference, every every speech that comes out of the White House is actually coming from this TV set. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but it's pretty ridiculous. But somebody speculated that it wasn't just constructed, you know, for sound and lighting purposes, but also maybe it's because Joe Biden can't use the Oval Office because maybe it's already occupied. Maybe there is somebody else there right now, somebody physically sitting in the Oval Office doing the job of president, right? And you know what? I don't think that's beyond the realm of possibilities. It's, you know, it's funny. I used to be very much a skeptic of these kinds of like outrageous proposals, these absurd ideas about Democrats. But after the 2020 election, after all the crap that the Democrats pulled with Donald Trump throughout his presidency, accusing him of colluding with the Russians uh, accusing him of the quid pro quo with Ukraine. I mean, all of the BS, the the insurrection on January 6th and all that kind of stuff. I don't disregard any outrageous conspiracy theory about the left. I think that most of them are very likely true. I'm not saying that they're all true. Of course not. I mean, of course, anybody can come up with any kind of wild theory and, and most of them are going to be wrong. But a lot of the stuff that I used to think was outrageous, I now think is probably true. And I'll tell you what, I have speculated in previous videos that the man behind the curtain, the man sitting in the Oval Office today, is in fact Barack Obama. And I'm not going to rehash my evidence from that video, but from Obama's staff filling Biden's administration to Obama having bought a home just a few blocks away from the White House, there is a lot of evidence that this is true. In another video, I broke down the concept of the deep state, explaining that it's not some crazy right-wing conspiracy theory, but rather a very real network of interested individuals and organizations with a lot of undue influence on the federal government. This includes the military industrial complex, basically companies that produce products and provide services for the US military, as well as Wall Street firms, a very few wealthy political activists, big tech activists like BLM, feminists, LGBT organizations, and environmental groups, and the various intelligence agencies and several other interested parties. These groups bribe, extort, and otherwise pressure the president and other politicians into doing their bidding. This is a very real phenomenon, and it's possibly the most insidious problem that we have with our federal government. But there is another interested party with a massive amount of power that I did mention in my previous video, but I didn't really focus on it. And the other day, Elon Musk came out and said that Joe Biden was a sock puppet for these people. And Elon Musk is absolutely right. Who is it? That in one moment first, I have to sell you something. I am back on keto. And let me tell you, if you're on keto, you really should be taking some MCT oil. And this is some of the best stuff that you can get. Keto Elevate from BioTrust. Actually, this is a new bag because my old bag I ran out of just this morning. Now, I've been making some ramen-like soups out of bone broth and these zero-carb noodles called konjac noodles, which are amazing, by the way. But then I dash a scoop of Keto Elevate in it, and I also put in a scoop of Ageless Multi-Collagen as well. 
And this is a fantastic way to get in some MCTs. Now, what are MCTs? MCTs are medium chain triglycerides, and they work a little bit differently than other fats. They go straight to your liver and they produce ketones. Now, ketones can be used by the body to produce energy, much like carbohydrates. But instead of using carbohydrates on keto, we use ketones. And if your body learns to burn fat to produce ketones for energy, well, then you can start burning stored fat from your body. So MCTs are a sort of jump starter for that process. Now, many Americans struggle to lose weight, as we all know. But you know, after 20, our body's metabolism, it slows down by as much as 4% each decade. By the time you're 50, there's a 10% drop or more. And this is why I highly recommend going on a ketogenic diet, at least for a few months, and getting some Keto Elevate from Biotrust. I've lost about 15 pounds in the past month, and I feel healthier and better than ever. A little keto, a little intermittent fasting, a little exercise, and a little Keto Elevate will help you get fit. And by a little exercise, I literally mean walking. Walking is the best fat burner on keto. So if you've been looking for a way to support your weight management goals, you will love Keto Elevate. Get 51% off by going to ketowithreagan.com or by clicking on the link in the description below. So who is it that Elon Musk is claiming that Joe Biden is beholden to? Labor unions. And Elon Musk, as I said, is absolutely right. Labor unions are some of Biden's many masters. The labor union that I've always found to have the most power over Biden and the Democrats generally is the teachers unions. There are actually two very big teachers unions, the National Education Association or the NEA and the American Federation of Teachers or the AFT. Incidentally, the NEA is the largest labor union of any kind in the entire country. Probably in the entire world. I don't know. I haven't checked on that yet. But the teachers unions actually have nothing to do with Elon Musk's accusation. Elon Musk's tweet reads thus. Biden is a UAW sock puppet. UAW is, of course, the United Auto Workers Union. And it is, as you might imagine, horribly corrupt. The reason Elon Musk is irritated with Biden is that Biden's $3.5 trillion tear down America... <laughs> I mean, build back better plan, I always mix that up, includes subsidies for electric and hybrid cars, but specifically excludes Tesla from some of those subsidies. Why? Well, because Tesla doesn't hire UAW union members. Instead, Elon implemented an employee ownership program in which Tesla workers get shares of Tesla stock when they start work at Tesla, and also occasionally as performance bonuses. Now, this tactic of Elon's really is a brilliant way of compensating employees. According to the website Electric, new hires at Tesla are given twenty to $40,000 in Tesla stock that vests over three years. And depending on when you start at the company, that starting bonus might be worth quite a lot of money at this point. In the past month alone, Tesla stock has jumped 50%. I mean, that's got to make for some pretty happy Tesla employees. In any case, such a strategy puts employees and the company on the same side of a battle to make Tesla profitable. In a labor union collective bargaining situation, the employees are put in opposition with the company. Employees fight for increased compensation and benefits, however well or poorly the company happens to be performing. This opposition can send tempers flaring, creating resentment between employee and employer, and can disincentivize employees from doing their best. Labor unions don't tend to bargain for merit-based pay, but rather for experience-based pay. The longer you're at a company, the more you get paid, whatever your actual value to the company. A harder worker and a poorer worker get paid the same under labor union contracts, just so long as they avoid getting fired. This is terrible for the company because they sometimes end up paying so much to employees that it becomes unsustainable in unprofitable years. And it eventually becomes terrible for the employees because many companies often have to move their operations overseas or simply declare bankruptcy. In either case, almost every employee at the company loses their job. Unions are praised on the left as the great defender of the working man. But the truth is that unions can be a double-edged sword. They can defend the working man, sure but they can also betray him. The real reason Democrats like unions isn't because they defend the working man, but rather because unions raise a lot of money for Democrat candidates. And they also encourage high voter turnout for Democrat candidates, although that part is changing. Union members voted 51% for Hillary, 
and 43% for Donald Trump in 2016, a significant shift toward the Republican candidate from previous years. Now, I couldn't find any data on the 2020 election, but that's probably because the Democrats don't want us to know that the shift was even greater. Look, unions may benefit some people, but they have devastated some industries and they've destroyed the lives of some average Americans. But even if they are not delivering as many votes to Democrats, they're still shoveling money into their campaigns. This is particularly insidious when you consider that the money flowing to Democrats is being taken from union dues, taken from the paychecks of union members that don't necessarily support those candidates. This has been an issue for a long time now. Republican union members hate that part of their income is being donated without their consent to Democrat candidates that they do not support. The union bosses try to justify these political donations by claiming that the Democrat candidates help the labor unions. However, Republican union workers strongly disagree. Nevertheless, their money is still flowing almost entirely to Democrat candidates year after year. And what's worse is that these labor union bosses, they're just as corrupt as the Democrats they're shoveling money to. Last June, the president of the United Auto Workers Union, Gary Jones, was sentenced to 28 months in prison Jones, conspiring with other union leaders, stole $1.5 million in union funds, spending the cash on golf, alcohol, vacations, and other luxuries. Hilariously, Jones is the second UAW president to be sentenced this year with prison time for stealing union funds. Dennis Williams, his predecessor, was sentenced to 21 months for the same theft. You'd think when they see one conspirator is sentenced that they maybe wouldn't install another conspirator to the president position. <laughs> so these buffoons aren't just corrupt, they're also morons. I feel like the Tesla compensation model is just a hell of a lot more attractive. I mean, do you want higher income with the caveat that part of it will perpetually be siphoned off for Democrat political candidates and corrupt union bosses, all with the ever-growing risk of bankruptcy or outsourcing with every strike and collective bargain? Or do you want a higher income that you keep all of and that incentivizes you and all of your fellow employees to build the company and protect it from bankruptcy. I mean, it just seems like the Tesla model is way better from all angles, and yet the Biden administration intends to punish Tesla for this. Why? Because Biden is, as Elon Musk says, a sock puppet for the UAW. Now, look, I'm against federal government subsidizing any company. Let the market decide. But this UAW favoritism is a brilliant illustration of precisely why government subsidizing private industry is a bad thing. The government gets to decide winners and losers, to help out their buddies and to punish those that they don't like. This is the definition of a quid pro quo. But that's the Joe Biden way. Let's go, Brandon. Well, that's it for me, and be sure to check out my other channel, Mr. Pagan, for a good laugh. And remember, it's not that our liberal friends are ignorant, it's just they know so much that isn't so. Let's go, Brandon. Good night. But together, with God's help, we can and will resolve the problems which now confront us. And after all, why shouldn't we believe that? We are Americans. God bless you and thank you.